Okay, Ms. Ragnar, we're live now. Okay, I'm ready, to, Director Edminster? Yeah, let's go. Okay, I was saying that um, previously this information was presented to the board in December of 2020, um, but at, since that time, the FTA has given transit agencies an opportunity to voluntarily allow them to review their plans. And because of such, we took advantage of that. And this information was sent to the FTA and in response to some recommendations and revisions that they sent to us, we are making revisions and presenting to the board. And therefore, at this time, it's coming again for approval with those revisions as recommended by the FTA. And with that, Mr. Hall will go ahead and make his presentation. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, as indicated, this uh, plan was actually adopted back in December and it does require annual uh, review. And as Ms. Ragnar said, we actually sent it off to the FTA and they made their recommendations. And with those, we've actually made a few modifications. It went through their technical assistance center. Um, I uh, also in the uh, board packet included a red lined document as well as one area or a couple of areas that were highlighted. Those were actually additions to the original document. Uh, the table of contents will obviously need to be uh, revised as we go through it and formulate or reformulate the actual plan itself. Um, they also recommended that the board uh, includes a memo uh, indicating their approval and adoption of the revisions. Uh, one of the things that I did also was add an approval table and then give everyone an opportunity to sign off on the revisions as we uh, go through the system and revise their uh, plan annually. Uh, one of the things that I also did was change the name of the CEO. It had the former CEO's name. Now it reflects that Ms. Uh, Raglan is the uh, interim CEO. I also uh, added names to the accountability table. Uh, the plan does require that all the accountable people be on the positions be named. The, the FTA recommended that we assign names to those positions. Uh, those modifications were also added. And once we had the initial plan adopted, we did send copies to the uh, Metropolitan Planning Commission as well as, as, well as GDOT. Uh, the FTA recommended that we indicated that in the document itself. So I did add that part that uh, once the revisions were made that it would be uh, sent to GDOT and the MPC. And also it uh, suggested, the FTA suggested that we had uh, implementation plan. I actually had the implementation plan as a standalone document. I just integrated that into the plan as an additional revision. And one other minor change that was recommended uh, was changing hazard mitigation area to the safety risk mitigation area. Uh, another uh, and final observation that they made is that because of the size of our agency, we do not have to have uh, a public communications or external communications plan, but we'll probably still keep that just to make sure that everyone is aware of the changes to the actual uh, safety plan itself. Those were all of the revisions that we uh, made. And are there any questions? For the safety plan, I'm, I've got no questions on that, but it looks good. It's a lot of effort on that. All right, thank you. Yeah, I would thank like you. I would like to inform you, Mr. Uh, Director Edminster, that in a previous committee meeting, that it was suggested that uh, a reference to uh, SCORE, SCORE, which was the vision of the prior uh, former CEO, be removed as well from this uh, safety plan. Say that again. It was suggested by one of the board members that references to SCORE that were included in the initial safety plan be removed. Okay, cool. Um, to make you aware of that. Yeah, sounds fine. Okay. You have any other questions or? <laughs> it's just insane. Um, no, not on that. I think the whole thing looks good. Okay. We're not scoring, not sure what we're doing, but that sounds, but, you know, long, long conversation there. Um, what's up next? Okay, um, Bryn is, is going to present the next item, which mentions the 5307 Capital Projects Prioritization. If you would, uh, I'm so tongue-tied right now, I don't know why. 
If you would please, Bryn. Yes, ma'am. Hi there. Um, as you know, the 5307 program makes federal resources available to urbanized areas for transit capital, operating expenses, and transit-related planning. So historically at CAT, 5307 funds have been used at a 50% match in our operating expenses, and we have been super blessed to have stimulus funds recently. You know that in March of this year, the board voted to approve using operating expenses with our CRISA funds for FY22, which frees up some 5307 funds. So basically you have before you a list that was sent out this morning of a bunch of projects and we're super excited. Um, in the federal fiscal year 21, we got uh, $3.8 million in 5307 funding. And this list has been compiled through cross department evaluation process, which utilized CATS board approved strategic plan, CATS uh, transit asset management plan, internal needs throughout the authority, as well as local match requirements. So you can see in this plan, we've got lots of cool stuff planned for this um, allocation of money. We have the electric bus rollout plan and our TDP. We have some technology upgrades, which include HR and finance, admin, as well as a website upgrade. We have some ITS upgrades that we can add into the system that's currently being created for us. A two-way radio system, which includes some technology, a bus airflow project. Uh, we've been talking, you have been talking to the board about parking lot improvements. So excited to see that on the list here. Um, some maintenance stuff like in-ground lifts, uh, painting the exterior of both CAT Central and the ITC, as well as facilities mods in the form of security upgrades. You see on the list, it actually says camera upgrades, but it was recommended in an earlier committee meeting to change that to security upgrades, which would allow for a little bit more flexibility if we needed to upgrade something in the realm of security that wasn't necessarily a camera. So again, we've planned out where uh, all these funding is planning to go approximately. Um, we are excited about having the list and keep in mind that the FY22 5307 apportionments will be released later this fall. So we'll have that funding coming up that we need to be keeping in the back of our mind, as well as the American Rescue Plan, the ARPA funds, uh, that um, is a larger pot of money that can include both operating and capital projects. So lots of uh, upcoming funding, which is super exciting that we can get some of our projects that have been um, needed uh, pushed to the front burner. Um, thank you, Bryn. Um, if I'm looking at this list, um, can you give me more information on wayside signage upgrades? I do not have all the details in front of me, but that does include, um, that is technology-based about that, um, that. It, it, it does include some of the information that the ferry, um, that this convention center asked us for in reference to signage at the dock. Ah, uh, thank you. So, so yes, that, that's that's basically what that's dedicated for. They'd ask us to place some information on the Hutchison Island side of the dock, just giving some information about scheduling for the ferry system. Um, I think that's great. I would. I also think we have a lot of opportunity for some very simple signage throughout the whole system, especially on the fixed route, to help our riders understand um, the system. I've heard from a number of folks stories about riders using a route for a number of years um, and not realizing that they could be getting to where they need to go quicker, um, but they don't necessarily know that. And I think anything that we can do to sort of increase or, or get people to know how our system works and just sort of how it could be interconnected um, would be fantastic. And I think that could be a combination of um, system, like a whole system map um, inside the bus would be cool. Um, or just information, increased information 
uh, on all of the flags, on all of the bus stop poles. Um, I'd love to see just sort of some really simple sort of non-technology based um, options that we could that we could do. I love the idea of in using increased technology. I think that's great. But at the same time, it's just more stuff to fix and ends up being very expensive. But I think if we can do anything that's um, paper based um, would be would be kind of nifty. Um, I think at the very least, having a system wide map installed in the bus would be really helpful. And I kind of just wonder why we, um, how we can get that done and how much, like, I'm not, I'm not necessarily sure how to sort of make something like that happen. Yes. And maybe you guys can help me help figure out how to make that work. We, we've thought about that before, particularly um, right behind the driver's area, using mm -hmm. that space to place a system map, but then, we wouldn't have anywhere to provide information or scheduling pamphlets or things like that. But, um, and to put it on the interior signs, we wouldn't have enough room to actually provide the system map. It'd be so elongated, nobody would, would be able to understand it. So we are, as a matter of fact, in a conversation internally about providing better communications among internal staff and our passengers. And that's one thing that we are, are in discussions with how can we better inform our passengers? So that is, I mean, you're right in line with some discussions we're already having internally because, I mean, we have to serve the passengers and the better informed they are, the better off the services to them. So we, we, we appreciate that. So you're, you're right in line with what we're already talking about. Yeah, no, the whole team's got my support on whatever I can do to help make that happen. Um, and whatever I can do to sort of support that as a board member, I'm here for it. I just think we've got a lot we can do uh, to make that easier. Thank you. Um, In addition, we have been working on uh, the marketing and communications team has been working on updating some of our signage out in the uh, out in the field, out in the community, and um, I think that'll actually tie in with our amenities. Um, potential project coming up in the future. You know, there are sign holders at some of our stops, but they're not at all of our stops. And so that is something that we're definitely looking into um, where they're appropriate and how we can get more information out to the public. Yeah, I, you know, I think like more information is better than less information to a point. Um, we don't want to, uh, you know, sort of drop too much anywhere, but I think that could be really helpful. I think that could be really helpful. Um, the other one that I just want to throw out there is, is um, and I, you know, I'm just going to kind of be like a broken record on this whole point, but this idea of trying to mix public art into public transit, which is, I think, allowed with FTA um, uh, funds, is to have some allocation. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure about these, about this specific money coming from the feds, but I do know um, that that is something that transit uh organizations can do and that could be an interesting thing to consider for under the line item for painting the exterior of cat and cat central um do we maybe want to work with an artist or an arts group um to have a local mural produced sort of talking about the story of cat talking about the you know the importance of transportation if we've already got one hundred twenty thousand dollars sort of lined up for that that could be a really beautiful project um, to bring more pride um, and awareness to what we're doing and it gets great media coverage um which is always helpful. I, I, agree. I agree with that. I've seen some beautiful artwork in Seattle. My son lives in Seattle and most of their transit stations um, do have artwork and yeah. it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Every stop has some type of art. So um, we could definitely look into how CAT can, can, can make that happen here. I think at CAT Central specifically, that could be really cool. There's a um, some of the mural programs I've done, the, the city is always trying to get us to do projects outside of downtown because downtown gets all the attention. Um, and I think Cat Central is perfectly placed in a neighborhood with, the, with some actually fairly large walls that could be really kind of beautiful for, um, for doing some collaborations that could be, I would just like to, I think like consider it. I think it's not a bad idea. I think we could get a lot of support for it. Um, again, I would support that as a board member and would be happy to try to, you know, finagle some other funding maybe from the city so that, uh, you know, we don't 
it can either come from this, but it's not hitting our operational or any other budgets at all. Um, more of just all that we would have to provide as CAT is just saying, yes, we approve and we actually want something like this. And I think that'd be, that'd be kind of fun to do. Okay, great. They have to look into that. Yeah. yeah. That, you, you'd be a good conduit to some community partners. I, I mean, it's a long, long list. It's a long, long list. We can definitely look into that. But that's, that's it, right, right Bryn? Yes, ma'am, that's it for me. And I do apologize. The first uh, proposed agenda item was the extension of COVID-19 emergency measures. And <laughs> I, I, I like, unless there's new information, I don't want to take up anybody anybody's time. I know you guys have done this already oh. twice today. <laughs> but I, I want to apologize to, to, to Lenny. I just, just went directly from, from the top to, to the next <laughs> item. I just overlooked him. I didn't mean to. No worries. Okay. Lenny, and I don't want to like take your like, you know, your your, your claim to fame. <laughs> Wait to no, no. You wanna... yeah, I, you're on the earlier call, so it, no changes, so we're good. Okay, sounds Thank good. You. Okay. Okay, well, um, the next thing is that the uh, the, the presentation that, that Charles all made was about the public transportation agency safety plan, and mm -hmm. it's been placed as an agenda item to go into the consent agenda. So that's just the next item. And, and that's it. I think, yes. Um, oh, what were the two things? What were the two things? Um, oh, crap. I did have two things I think I, I'd like to chat with you guys about. Um, just completely blanked on what the second one was. Um, but the first one was, are we in, okay, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how soon and how quickly can we rearrange these meetings so that you guys aren't doing it three times every month? And is that on track to happen? Well, um, I was told that it was been my understanding that we were waiting for official um, appointments from uh, for board members. We haven't mm -hmm. received those yet. Before official what? Appointments. Oh, okay, board yeah. Members. Yes. So, um, and then we wanted to have a consensus from those board members how they wanted those meetings to be set up. Um, you could, but I also think, I mean, just like, uh, I think moving to that could be, I'm very supportive of anything that just doesn't, that keeps, that keeps all of executive staff sort of, you know, focused on, not repeating <laughs> these presentations three times. <laughs> yes, um, sir. And I'm very open to everything. I think all the ideas that were sent out, I'm, I'm totally um, down with that. I'm really big into iterating. And so I think if we do that for three or four months and we're like, wow, this is a horrible setup, actually, we're not able to have the conversations we were, then we change it. Um, but I do think that having, having you guys repeat things three times, I'm, I wouldn't, I don't know, maybe everybody else enjoys that, but I would think that we could be doing more to sort of get a little bit, um, to be, to sort of increase our collaboration and decrease how much we're um, kind of repeating things. Um, so I, I mean, like if that was to be happening next month, I'd be fine with that. And I would imagine that any incoming board members we might have or ha whatever happens with the new appointments, um, we'll just sort of deal with that as it comes. We are going to put together something and send it to the board members for consideration. And if you would just ask, you know, for comments or suggestions, recommendations, things like that before we initiate any changes. My comments would, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll share, you know, my main one right now. Um, and I'll, I'm looking forward to responding to what you send out, but mainly just encouraging open communication and collaboration which I think is more effective in kind of smaller groups, but we all have to start with the same information. And so I did like the, I think it was O'Halloran's idea of sort of like, let's do the presentations together. And then maybe we break up into three groups and kind of have the discussions we need to have um, with, the, with the staff members that are most um, close to you know, the, the groups that relevant we're putting together. To those, yeah, relevant to those topics, yes. Yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. But I mean, that just seems like a good idea to me. But then again, yes. I, you know, I'm also big on this thing. Let's try it for like three, four months and then try to tweak it. And I think okay. if we, maybe, so maybe that's something else to consider is like, let's bake into this a process where we can be critical on a time. We can, we can um, change the process if we need every, every four or whatever months um, in order to get to something that works for the group. All right. Um, my other question too, have we been in any communication with the school board? We have. Um, As, actually, yeah. I, I met with Dr. Levette on, on two occasions within okay. the last few months. And we are, believe it or not, which is not hard to believe, we are actually competing for bus operators. I would imagine. They, they I have a shortage. Yes, they have a shortage. And as she said, you know, of course, of course, we would love to collaborate with CAD, but you're in the same boat that we're in. You're looking for operators and we're looking for operators. So we can't really stretch our resources anymore because we're in search of operators. We have a shortage and we're trying to um, meet the needs of our systems. We can't offer any assistance to them at the same time. So we are really competing for the same operators out there now. Is there, I know if you're under 18, you pay half fare right now? Um, 16. If you're under 16, you pay a half fare. Um, have we thought about the pros and cons of, of eliminating a fare if you're under a certain age or um, increasing that to 18? I, because I agree, I don't think we have any capacity to change routes or, you know, I don't think we have any capacity to change routes or change any of our fixed route structure at all, because I do understand we're in the same boat there. Um, well, well really, it's, you know? it's half fair now, like you said, as you said, it is half fair now for school age children. And then I, I might, I may stand corrected in that it's, it's, um, no, I think it's 16, 16 yeah. and under, but, um, but we could, um, I guess, consider, but that would have to come before the board because it would affect fares. Mm -hmm. Rather, we could apply that to 17 and 18 years or those who are still in high school. Mm -hmm. Some of those are, all, some of them are 19 years old in high school, but we could propose that to the board. I think if we could do something that's policy-based and not planning-based in order to um, provide at like, you know, if we could even help out just like, uh, I don't know, a dozen kids, we'd at least be doing something. Um, just because the more I read about that, there, it's, that's just a really unfortunate, but very practical decision that the school board had to make. And so I don't fault them for making that, but it does, I think it's going to widen um, some pretty unfortunate gaps we've already trying to been closed for decades here um so i would be really interested in, in in trying to find some ways that have very very low um impact on our budget and could mainly be done through policy and, and no rerouting or pre or replanning or really any extra providing no extra capacity but making it easier and honestly part of that could just be like kind of a social media thing um, about, hey, like, here's some routes that go by these particular schools. Um, here, uh, you know, I mean, just stuff kind of very simply like that. Um, we, we, we have met with the school board and we have mm -hmm. given them that information. We've done a, a, a really broad analysis of where our buses travel in correlation to the schools, not just high schools, but from elementary. Cool. So we've already done that and given them that information. But um, uh, communications is actually working on uh, a pamphlet to provide to the school system as they open in August that will show which buses serve those school areas. I love that. So I love that. And I'll, I'll make sure you get a copy of it when it's complete. I love that. I think, I mean, that's, that's exactly kind of what I'm talking about is that doesn't add any capacity, but also takes care of just, again, just getting that information to the people that need it. I mean, yes, that's sir. such a hard part. Um, yes, this great responsibility. I'll, I'll make sure I forward that to you. I could forward okay. it to you now, but it's not completed. But if you yeah, don't mind, okay. Um, 
that's kind of all that I've got. I would, and just to recap on that, um, you know, thank you everybody for, for sharing these presentations. I'm excited that we're going to be able to get this um, safety plan in. That's, I know that's been a long, large work in, in progress. Does that have any impact on our insurance? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, I think that had is. been mentioned earlier. That's yes. great. Yes, it does. Um, and yeah, I think the sooner we can get around to uh, having more con uh, constructive and smaller meetings, I'm also very on board with that. And any <laughs> further communication we can do with any um, anything relaying or dealing with moving people under the age of or people in our school system. Um, to the places they need to go after school activities, to school, whatever it might be. Um, I think if we can help with sort of educating folks and doing outreach on that, I'm very yes. interested in working on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Other than that, um, I don't have anything more. And unless you guys do, then let's wrap this up. All right. Thank you.